Well, good morning all and welcome to the off-grid homestead where it's going to be 40 degrees Celsius today, which is, I think it's about 104 Fahrenheit on the Fahrenheit scale. But what I've got to do this morning before the heat arrives is I've got to get my morning chores done. So I'm going to get the watering done here in the veggie garden, get everything watered and have a look at this. That is the... Um, zucchinis, they are smashing it out. I am really having good luck with my zucchinis this year, as well as my tomatoes are definitely coming up quite nicely. And with the potatoes, let me spin around for you. My potatoes here are not far off needing to be picked. You can see here that they're dying off, so I've got to pick those very shortly. Hello, Chucky, Chucky. She's saying hello to my subscribers. And who's a jealous puppy just behind that, the uh, shake-off there? And the silver beet, of course, always goes well here. I'm sorry, am I talking to the Chookies? Today we've also got, all this afternoon, we've got some rain coming in, some storms. And kind of round here, when you get storms, sometimes they get us, sometimes they go around us. And I hope they get us, because have a look here at... Sun's in the way at my water tank because we look here. I'm down to there. I'm just about out of water in my water tanks again. So we've really been going using a lot of water because it's been so hot with the evaporative. Have a look at this. Excuse me, excuse me, puppy. Can you explain to me and the audience what this is? Have a look here. We've chewed some of the retic line. Joys of puppies. So if you haven't seen the shorts video that I made yesterday showing the solar panels on the roof, well, I'll show you them in this video today. So I managed to get some solar panels up on the roof for the 24 volt system and get that hooked in and going. So let's get up on the roof and have a look at the panels that I've put up there. So I've put four solar panels up on the roof of the workshop here so this is the workshop the cabin is here so just so you can sort of get a bit of an indication this is not the cabin roof this is the workshop roof and what i've put up is i've put up 480 watt panels now the way i've wired these for now it's a little bit different i've wired them in parallel series so i've wired these two in parallel these two in parallel and then I series those two together normally I'd do it the other way around I'd wire them in series wire those in series so the panels get wide in series and the output gets wide in parallel but I've, I've done it differently I'm not worried because I am going to be putting brand new panels on the roof when I get to that point now it's windy at the moment so I'm hoping the wind doesn't screw up my audio the reason why these panels won't be staying on the roof is we have a look here the panels have got all these micro cracks through the panels now i bought these panels back in 2008 so it's now 2025 when i'm shooting this so they are i, I don't know 17 18 years old however their numbers work out with the mass on that so they are definitely getting old they still work but you can see there's a lot of micro cracks in those cells. So I do plan on getting some lower voltage panels. So these panels are 38 volt panels. Oh, there's that wind again. Sorry about the audio. So there's 38 volt panels that are wide in uh, parallel ser series going to 76 volts going down the line. I do want to get lower voltage panels so I can just drop that line voltage a little bit uh, that will be in future videos well let's go into the workshop here right over in the corner we have all of our solar and we'll have a look to see at 8 30 in the morning what we're getting in from our two systems now if you're wanting to know what all this is I have done a video on this so have a look through my channel one of my uh, recent videos I've done explains everything here. So our 48 volts, uh, sorry, our 24 volt system 
we can see we've got a panel voltage of 76 volts at one and a half amps going in and then we've got four amps at 27 volts going into the battery and I'd, I'd say that's probably because the sun isn't up let's have a look at our state of charge our state of charge on our batteries oh okay so we're 73 uh, 97 percent so our batteries are pretty well full so we're really not going to be able to get too much in you know what i'll put a load on that and we'll have a look at the load just for curiosity our 20 our 12 volt system is bringing in 0.7 of an amp what's our 12 volt system sitting at 85 percent so yeah we need to get some sun on the panels for our 12 volt system so i'll put it i've got this electric heater here so we're going to plug that into the inverter and, and uh, get some loads going on for the, the 24 volt system if you've noticed yes a little bit of a mishap done by the puppy he chewed this so I do need to fix that so we need to make sure we don't get a short so we'll turn this on uh, turn that on there like that so now we're pulling about 1800 watts which is about the maximum that inverter can do and we'll see what our system goes up to so our panel voltage has dropped down to 67 volts and we got 6.7, 9.6. As our MPPT does its little little calculations. So it's running from this. Oh, come on, focus. It's running from this invert, uh, this solar charge controller here with the 40 amps. It's the King's controller, but it's actually the EP Ever controller with King's logo. So this is actually the EP Ever controller. So what are we bringing in now just for those people? So we're getting about nearly 10 amps coming in at 8.30 in the morning from very tired 180 watt panels. Now just remember that we're running 24 volts, so 10 amps at 24 volts is equivalent to 20 amps at 12 volts. And if you didn't understand that, there's plenty of videos explaining volts, amps, watts, and how to do that conversion. I was gonna put a concrete floor down here in the workshop because this is all going to be enclosed into a room. But what I'm thinking of doing is doing a yellow tongue and groove flooring termite resistant H2 treated yellow tongue flooring. Now anyone in, in Australia, how do I explain yellow tongue to someone who's not in Australia? It's basically chipboard or particle board, probably chipboard that is uh, all glued together. That's what they use for flooring on houses. That's going to work out a lot cheaper than doing concrete and I'll be able to do that yellow tongue myself. So I'm considering doing the yellow tongue flooring down here and then building that room and using that flooring. It's not going to be a flooring where I'm going to be putting vehicles on it or heavy weights, motorbikes and, and doing uh, oil changes and mechanical services. This is all going to be completely enclosed into a lockable room. It's going to be insulated with gyp rock walls. It's going to be my sort of electronics uh, little workshop area, an off-grid little workshop area. So it's going to be almost like what you would see inside a house. So I don't need to put weight on it. Hence is why I'm sort of thinking about using the tongue and groove instead of the concrete. But your thoughts would be really appreciated. Or any other ideas of what you think I could use for flooring? Well, there you have Sunday morning's video on the progression of the workshop, getting those solar panels up on the roof. And you know what? Being a Sunday, I guess that means I can come in here and grab myself an ice, icy cold bit. Actually, it's 8.30 in the morning. It's probably a little bit too early to have a beer. I might go in and make myself a cup of joe. So if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and we will see you in the next video as we continue our build here on the workshop, bring some of the stuff from the sea container into here as well and everything that's expensive gets locked in the sea container if you were wondering about the security aspects until i get this locked up so i'm gonna go make myself a cup of joe and i'll see you in the next video